Well, it's that time for Interface here on NBC Radio, the sound of the nation. In studio with us this morning, we have uh, the resident representative of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, Mrs. Elrita Miguel. Good morning and welcome. Uh, good morning, Javel. Thank you very much for having me. And how are you doing today? Oh, very well, thank you. That's good. Always, good. always a pleasure to have you here with ah, us. Always a pleasure <laughs> to be here with you. Great. Effective the first day of July 2015, the Eastern Ca- Caribbean Central Bank uh, shall discontinue the issuance of the one cent and the two cent uh, to the ECCU commercial banks and the commercial banks shall cease uh, to issue the one and the two cents to consumers. That's an exciting one, I guess. And we are excited to hear about it this morning. Uh, why are the one cent and the two cents being withdrawn? Okay, uh, First of all, let me preface that by saying that the issuing of currency is the responsibility of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank. And we also have the responsibility to withdraw currency from circulation. So at the meeting of the Monetary Council held in February of this year, and the Monetary Council is made up of the Ministers of Finance of all the the countries that make up the currency union. So in February of this year, the Monetary Council made a decision to withdraw the one and two cent coins from circulation. And you ask why? Uh, There are a couple of reasons why that decision was made. Uh, First of all, there is the production cost and the cost of keeping the one cent and two cent coins in circulation is not just for the ECCB. Yes, we are the producers, but businesses and private sector commercial banks, they also have costs associated with keeping these coins in circulation, such as storage costs, sorting costs, transportation costs. So first of all, there is the cost associated with it. Secondly, there is the perceived low value by consumers because as you would know that the one cent and two cent coins on their own have very low purchasing power. You can hardly buy anything with a one cent or with a two cent. So because of the low purchasing power and the perceived low value to consumers, we find that the households tend to accumulate them. And as a result of the accumulation in households, these coins have not been redeemed. They are not being redeemed. So they are not coming back into circulation. They are put out in the public, but they are not coming back in the system to be circulated. So these are some of the reasons that were considered by the Monetary Council when they made that decision. Can uh, consumers still use the one cents and the two cents after July 2015? Yes, that is correct. After the 1st of July 2015, the ECCB will no longer issue the one and two cent coins to commercial banks. Commercial banks will no longer issue these coins to the public, but they will remain legal tender. So it means that if you're conducting a transaction, cash transaction, and you have the correct amount of the total of your bill and you have a one cent or two cent you can still pay with the one cent and two cent but the merchants the businesses will not be giving you back one cent and two cent as change uh, so the eccb has come up with some rounding rules to take care of that and I, i'm sure later on we'll have an opportunity to go through the rounding rules so yes you can use the one cent and two cent coins for a period of five years they remain legal tender until the 30th of june 2020 so you can use them in regular transaction or you can take them to your financial institution and get the face value for them. Well, I was about to ask what then will happen if I'm not able to get back change in the one cents and two cents. And you mentioned the rounding rules. What? Tell us about the rounding rules. How does this work? Okay. The rounding rules goes like this. It's applied based on the, a well-functioning Swedish system. So it's not new to us. And this Swedish model, which has been around for over two decades, basically states that in calculating cash transactions where the total does not end in zero or five, the total, which is the final payment, must be rounded to the nearest sum 
in five or zero. So here, if the total ends in a value of one cent or two cent, you will round down to zero. So if you are buying something that costs five dollars and one cent, you will pay five dollars. If it costs five dollars and two cents, you will pay five dollars. If it also ends in six cents and seven cents, you also pay, you bring it down to zero. So that is wrong down. In rounding up now, if the change is three cent or four cent, you will round up to the nearest five cents. So whereas we are for the, the bill of five or one and five or two, we were paying just five. In the case of three cents and four cents, we will pay five or five, five dollars and five cents. So that's wrong up. The same way, if it's eight cent and nine cents, you would pay ten cents. So you would round up to ten cents. So that's basically how the the rounding rule works. And we want to say that the rounding system provides a fair, consistent, and transparent manner to compute the total payment in a cash transaction. And you will note I keep saying cash transaction because it, it does not affect other types of payments. So basically this is how the rounding rule would work. Uh, do businesses or retailers round the prices of individual items? No, not at all. Um, as we said before, it's a total. So you go to the supermarket and you buy several items and I thought I, I brought an example here let me see if I can find the example that I brought you go to the supermarket and you buy some goods and I have here two baskets of goods one where you would run down and one where you would run up so you bought three items on this the total is 1411 and you bought some other items the total is 1613 so in the first instance where the total amount is 1411 you you would pay 1410 because here it's a 1 cent so you're rounding down to 10 and in the case where it's 1613 you would pay 1615 because you round up to the next 5 cents so it's a total we are looking at here and I I would like to point out here that when we say total you have to include the VAT or any taxes and fees and dues. You have to include those before you arrive at the total. So when all your VAT and everything else has been added in, then is when you would do the rounding on the total value. But I also want to point out that if you were to buy one item, that's your total value. So that is what you would be co what would be considered as the total. So you're basically saying that um, the the whole rounding rules will not affect taxes well the wrong then rules will not affect taxes in that you do not compute on the taxes until you have arrived at your total amount in other words you do not say well i'm going to put the, the taxes on the vat you purchase some items you do not put the taxes on the, the vat amount and then add it to the total you compute the total first and then you add the tax the the Rounding. Uh, businesses, retailers, are they expected to follow the ECCB rounding rules? Well, the the ECCB has come up. Uh, we have drafted um, legislation. I think I have the name of the exact legislation. Okay, here it is. The regulation entitled Eastern Caribbean Central Bank. Withdrawal from circulation of one cent and two cent coins, regulation 2015, which will take effect from the 1st of July 2015. So these have been drafted and they have been submitted to the respective authorities in member countries to be gazetted. Now, these regulations identify rounding rules to be adopted to settle cash payments in instances where the total does not end in five cents or zero cents and the exact payment is not tendered so the rounding rules provide a fair and transparent manner to discharge such cash transaction and we anticipate that the merchants will you know use these guidelines you know and along with the guidelines because we are putting the 
legislation in place, we anticipate that they would follow the legislation. And I just want to point out here that research indicates that some countries like Canada have used voluntary guidelines to introduce the rounding system when they discontinued their penny, while other countries have used legislation. Now, legislation could indicate the choice or it could provide vendors with the statutory authority for rounding up or down, which they might need since rounding up, as you know, would anger consumers. None of us want to pay more than our bill. So the, the regulations then give the merchants the ability to enforce it, even though the consumers would not want to accept in the cases where they are rounded down. Oh. But regardless of whether the applicable wrongling system is based on voluntary guidelines or legislation, as in our case, as I said, it provides a fair and transparent framework to ensure that the social cost of ensuring uninterrupted payments can be reduced and day-to-day -day operation becomes easier. Uh, well, for those who are now joining us, uh, you're listening to Interface here on NBC Radio in studio with us. We have resident representative of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, Mrs. Elrita Miguel, with us. We're talking about the withdrawal of the one cent and the two cent effective July 1st. I believe at this time you would encourage persons who have been saving for years the one cents and the two cents to take them into the banks, get them changed and all that before July 1st. Any word for those persons? Yes, absolutely. And we have seen this happening. I cannot tell you here how <laughs> much we have gotten in so far in the banks, but it's uh, it's an enormous amount. When I saw the amount of coins, one cent and two cents coming into us from the commercial banks that have been redeemed in the last two months, I could not believe that households had all these coins stored up. But yes, I would like to encourage them to to use them. There's no need to rush. And this is what is, has happened, as I said, in the last two months, we have seen an enormous accumulation of one cent and two cent coins in the banking system so i want to say to consumers there's no need to rush to get them into the banking system as we said earlier the one cent and two cent coins remain legal tender up to the 30th of june 2020 so if you have them you can still use them to negotiate payments but if you would prefer to take them into your bank to get face value for them, you still have five years in which to do so. So there's no need to rush. Yes, please, we want to get them in. We want you to bring them in. But I'm saying to you that there's no rush because there's five years up to the 30th of June 2020. And you can still use them for regular payments. We now wrap it up stage. Any final words before you go? Yes, I, I want to appeal to merchants, consumers, all of us, we are all in this together. We are not the first to do this. I know that other countries have discontinued the use of coins. Just last year, Barbados discontinued the, the use of coins coins they one cent coin so it's not the first time we're doing this and i know that perhaps initially people may not see how it's going to help them but i want to say to you that it would benefit all of us i want to appeal to all of us the merchants the vendors the consumers let us all work together the idea is to get the system working to get the coins back into us so if you have them use them to do your regular transactions and please also take them into your commercial banks but i want to emphasize there's no rush there's five years at the end of of june 2020 you cannot spend them anymore but you can bring them into the ECCB from the 1st of July. And although they are not legal tender, you would still be able to, to get your face value for them. Persons might have further questions to ask. Uh, what's the email address they can email you or the number to call? Yes. If there are other questions, we have set up an email address just for this purpose. It's coins at eccb-centralbank.org 
or you can call us here in St. Vincent at our agency office. Our number at the agency office is 4561413. And if you prefer to meet with us face to face, you can come to our office. Our office is located at French's in the French's House building. Thank you so much, Mrs. Miguel, for dropping by today and sharing with us, uh, bringing to us up to date as to how we go about with the withdrawal of the one cent and the two cents. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Javel, for having me. And I look forward to further interaction as we proceed with the withdrawal process. You are welcome. No problem. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye.